Hi, my name is Sam, and in this video I'll be showing you how to make tissue paper art and adding a silhouette landscape painting. In your library provided kit you'll find two pieces of Bristol board, your chosen colors of tissue paper, and some black paint. A reminder for you, wet tissue paper will stain your hands and likely your clothes, so take precautions and be prepared to wash your hands a few times after you're done. To start ourselves off, we'll need a piece of Bristol board and tissue paper, paintbrush, and water handy. You'll want to decide if you want your painting to be wide or tall, also called landscape and portrait. You'll also want to decide if you want to leave any white space to make it look like a snowy landscape. If you do, remember to leave that area blank and don't cover it with tissue paper. Rip up your tissue paper and start painting them down using a wet brush. I like to add one piece at a time so I can better control the tissue paper. Also try layering the tissue paper on top of each other to create different mixtures of color. This is where you're likely to stain your fingers with color as you may need to hold down the paper as you paint. When you're done, set it aside to dry. When it's dry, you can remove the tissue paper and discard it. And you're ready to start painting! You can paint whatever kind of scene you'd like. If you want to follow the style of the inspiration paintings we included in the kit, the rest of this video will show you how to paint each one. For this step, you'll need black paint, some water, and a paintbrush. You can use any type of brush, round or square. I'm going to use a square brush because the flat sides can be useful for painting large areas like hills or the ground. For painting trees, however, I'm going to be holding the brush upright and painting with the edge of the brush as well as with a corner tip. With this painting, I'll be using lots of black to paint a large hill across my canvas. Next, I'm painting in an up and down kind of a zigzag motion to create some distant trees. Think of how maybe you're in the car and you see a hill in the distance. It may not be completely rounded, you'll see the barest hint of trees that have different heights. Next, we'll start adding some detail with trees that look like they're closer to you. Use the edge of your brush to draw a line. This is the trunk of your tree. Next, you can use the tip of your brush to start adding the branches and needles of an evergreen. I'm kind of lightly bouncing the edge of the brush along my canvas to create the branches. I'm moving the brush side to side and making sure to work outwards to create that triangular shape that evergreens have. Trees aren't perfect. One side might have an extra branch than the other. Sometimes you'll make happy accidents. I'm also adding more trees across the painting. Try to make them different heights since no trees are exactly the same. And this tricks your eye into believing that some trees are further away than the others. Throughout all this, you can see that I'm always smoothing out my brush strokes on the hill and adding more black so that it looks more solid. 
you'll want to do this too so that you can hide the color beneath and make a solid silhouette painting. For the second style of painting, we're going to be painting just the tops of the trees. So pretend that you're standing in the middle of a forest and you're looking up at a brilliant sunrise or sunset. You can just see the tops of the trees. Because we're in the middle of that forest, the trees are going to be a lot closer to your eye and therefore they're going to be a lot bigger on the canvas. Using the same technique as before, we'll start by painting the trunks of the trees and adding some branches on the sides. Keep adding in as many trees as you'd like, but change up the heights so that they're not all the same. some extra detail by painting in some birds. I'm using the tip of my brush to paint some small simple V shapes that look like birds in flight. The third painting is going to be a snowy landscape, so I've kept the bottom half of the canvas white. I'll be painting some distant trees and bushes across part of the horizon line to show that there's maybe a small forest back there. But our main focal point will be a large tree in the foreground of the painting. I'm putting this evergreen on the right hand side and using the trunk and branch technique. Because this tree is so close to the viewer's eye, make sure you leave enough room to make a large base for the bottom of that triangle shape. Finally, to change things up completely, maybe you don't want to think about cold winters in dark forests anymore, maybe you want to take a trip to a hot desert. Even though I left the bottom half of this painting white, I'm going to paint the bottom part black and add in some cacti. Like in previous paintings, I'm creating cacti that are different heights to show that they're closer or further away from the person's eye. Add one or two arms to the cacti, Sometimes they grow irregularly, so they don't have to be perfect. And I'm also adding in some rough squares to look like large rocks in the landscape too.
And there you have it, four different paintings and four different ways to play around with your brilliant, colorful sky. I'd love to see what you painted. You can share them on Instagram with hashtag MySCPLTeens, or you can email me at the email link provided in the kit. Thanks for watching.